Howdy doodly. Um, so yeah, let's get right into this. I got my hair done on Friday, but it doesn't really look all that great anymore. I feel like it's growing out. What do you guys think? Does it look like it's growing? I don't know, but I can tell because this side is like down here now when it was like way up here. And so like I have to like make sure it's like laying down properly. Otherwise it just like sticks out and it's ugly. I think on Friday I'm gonna get my hair done again. Um, and like get a new color because it's supposed to be blue black, but my hair looks blue brown right now i don't know like well look, it's black but the blue part is like gone but i think this time i'm gonna go with a more plumish color instead of a blue we'll see how that works out i'm gonna spray my face with some fix plus like i always do it's my favorite mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't know what look i'm gonna do today i want to do something different I always say that and then I always end up doing like the exact same look that I always do. Ah! Okay, I dropped my palette. I hate when I drop these because I always end up breaking a shadow and then my life is over. I'm going to use face and body this time. I'm not going to use my CK1 even though my CK1 is my fave. But I feel like my skin has gotten a little lighter. Okay, I'm going to mix a little bit of this because I have to. Somebody asked me why I disperse my my foundations onto my face instead of onto like the brush or something I don't know and it would probably be a lot better if I actually did use the brush but who knows bruh who knows and I'm not using my Real Techniques brush for this because the um, face and body foundation is a lot more runny and it doesn't blend out as good with a Real Techniques brush as opposed to a more stiff brush if you use brushes a lot is that a fly? Do y'all see that? Flat top brushes help set the foundation a little better than blending brushes. Blending brushes make it more diffused and buffed out so the pigment doesn't really set good onto your face. I'm like pushing the foundation into my face right now. Um, I know some people in my last video said they wanted me to kind of talk about Christian life or whatever. Um, I haven't talked about like Christianity or like the struggles of being a Christian or anything like that in a while. I made a video a long time ago and it, I was in college when that came out. When I made that video, when I came out like it's a movie. <laughs> I was in college when I made that video because I was like one of the only people, actually I was the only person that did not go out and um, party and I didn't go to the club. I never like stayed out past like 12. People would always wonder why I would never go out. A lot of my friends were confused. They were like, why don't you go out? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And it wasn't like they were like, you know, like, oh my God, you don't go out. You don't do this. You don't hang out with us. Like, do you not like having friends? But honestly, I knew my parents were going to like ask me where I was. So, so I was mostly scared. But at that time, I really had to get over the fact that I wasn't going to be able to hang out. Because even though I did want to go out, I, I couldn't. I knew I couldn't. I knew I up up uphold I had to uphold a standard for myself for my parents and because I knew a lot of people around the area so if they saw me there word would get back and as a preacher's kid where you are is important regardless of if you want to be there or not I knew I had to set myself apart some kind of way but at the same time it wasn't really in my heart to like not do some of the things people were doing. There was still a little part of me that wanted to go to the club. There was a part of me that wanted to get drunk like one time, just to see what it would be like. Um, but I always had people telling me that it wasn't worth it. And then I always also had that conviction. Christian is my middle name, like literally. My parents named me Victoria Christian. I've always had that in the back of my head, like, no, Vicky, you're not like everybody else. Even though I've tried my hand at it. Um, and there was actually a point in my life around middle school is when I really started trying to compromise and be like everybody else. And then high school, I lost it for about a year or two. My junior and senior year, I was wilding out. Um, me and this guy that I had been talking to since middle school were hitting it off pretty well. Actually, we weren't. He thought we were. I really didn't like him, but he was in love with me. Um, 
I mean, I did like him. I really liked him as a friend, but I did. I knew he wasn't my husband because I knew it wasn't gonna last. But it was just fun because it was adventurous and I was trying to be bad. So it worked for that reason. I apologized to him a long time ago for putting him through that. But anyways, yeah, besides the point, me and him were hitting it off. We were like, you know, hanging out and stuff. And I, I really thought I was a bad girl. I was, I was feeling myself way too much. I was way too egotistical. Um, because I went through this period in high school where nobody liked me. Like, I was, like, pretty much by myself. Because um, I went to a private school and I was one of the only black girls in my grade. There were three of us. I was the only one that was regular black. Um, you know, I felt isolated. So I had to really learn to love myself. And unfortunately, I ended up loving myself a little bit too much. So, you know, at that point, I really wasn't thinking about God. I thought I was my own God. Mind you, me and my parents, well, me and my family had taken a seven-year hiatus from church because my dad went, you know, he started to travel more instead of being at a church, like a physical church. So we didn't have a church home from the time that I was in the fifth grade to the time that I graduated high school. So all through that, all through those years, I was pretty much lost because I didn't have a church family. I didn't have other, like, real Christian people around me. In high school, I was, I was, I was a freak. I mean, I wasn't a freak. I was a freak in my mind. <laughs> I wasn't a hoe. I wasn't a hoe. I was not a hoe. But I was a freak. In my mind, I was a freak. I thought I was a hoe. In my mind, I was like, yeah, I'm like doing this. But I'm not. I wasn't. I was still a virgin. Um, so it wasn't like I was super bad. But in my mind, I wasn't pure. I wasn't innocent. Because I really didn't have a relationship with God. And being a preacher's kid all my life, you know, my parents kind of expected me to know what a relationship with God was like, but because their parents never explained that. They just expected you to read the Bible, go to church, and do what you're supposed to do, um, which unfortunately did not work for a lot of us. They just beat the Bible down your throat and tell you, you are going to follow this or you're going to go to hell. So they made us, they scared us into religion, which, I mean, my parents didn't do this, but churches and older people in church scared us into religion. Um, and so we just assumed that it was the right thing to do, but never really had any guidance for it. So staying in it when everything else looks like so much more fun is really hard. And I understand that because that was me before I grad before I left school. You know, when I got to college and I realized that I really couldn't be the person that I wanted to be the freak. I couldn't be like wild and crazy like everybody else. Like I didn't want to disappoint my parents. I chose not to be that person, but I really wanted to be. And once I really got to, when I, ah! when I got to my sophomore year in college, I really, I realized how lost I was. I wasn't broken. I wasn't damaged. I didn't have a lot of baggage. I felt empty. I felt like, like something was missing. And it was my relationship, my relationship with God. It, that's what was missing. And I noticed that all the relationships in my life previous prior to meeting my husband were all failures. Um, I had a bunch of friends that did things that I wasn't supposed to do and they either influenced me to do them or we just ended up not hanging out a lot. So, you know, most people I never really got to know on a real deep level because I didn't really want them to see how um, unexperienced I was. I mean, it didn't really make people not like me. It just kind of pushed me into a corner. I spent a lot of nights alone. I spent a lot of nights on Tumblr, you know, and people would be like, well, why do you have a long distance relationship? And why do you date him? And why can't you have fun with us? Cameron was always my way out. Um, whenever, whenever people wanted to go out and do stuff, I was like, no, I'm gonna go home and Skype. I gotta Skype my man, that's how it is. And they're like, oh, Vicky, that's so cute. Y'all are so committed or whatever. But I mean, he was the only, he was my only conviction at the time because I really didn't have a relationship with God. But he really pushed me to get to that place. I mean, I knew who I was, but I didn't know what I was put on the earth to do. And I didn't know what my purpose was. I was at school, pointless. I was bored. I was lazy. I didn't want to go to class ever. And I would always tell him that. I'm like, I hate school. Why do I hate school? Why do I hate being here? And he was like, well, you know, Vicky, you don't know what you want to do with your life. And, you know, you have a lot of talents. You're good at a lot of things. You just don't know what it is that you're here to do. Like, what's your purpose? He was like, you know, you really need to develop a relationship with God. You need to ask him about it. And I was like, well, how do I do that? 
my sophomore year is when I dropped out. Like, okay, I'm gonna dedicate a whole summer getting to know how to talk to God and how to like get out my feelings and understand who I am. And that way I'm not wasting a bunch of money in school trying to figure out who I am and I actually have some like backup that lets me know, okay, this is what you're really supposed to be doing. I took a whole summer, I started praying, I started reading the Bible and I learned how to um, build a relationship with God by journaling and all this stuff like that. I tried all of it, I did all of it. Um, and it really helped me to kind of understand how I operate, how my brain works. I, I learned so much that summer. Um, the only person that was really there was Cameron. He was the only person that I talked to at that time. I didn't have any other friends that were influencing me, nobody else around um, distracting me or anything like that. And he wasn't even a distraction to me distraction to me because he wasn't living in the same area. He lived all the way across country. So I had a lot of time to myself. Once I did that, um, that's when I really learned the difference between knowing of God and knowing God for yourself. And I think that's why so many people can say, oh, I'm a Christian, but you don't see it. You don't see them actually living it. And it kind of discourages you and makes you feel like, because I don't know if you felt like this, but I've been to a lot of churches. And at one point in my life, I seriously like hated church. Like, that was that point where we weren't going to church for like seven years. I hated church, I hated everything about it. I didn't like how church people would act. I didn't believe that they were really Christians because it's like, okay, all y'all are making horrible decisions. You know, you're talking about how much you love God, but you don't really do stuff right when you leave. Like you're at church on Sunday and you're cool that day, but every other day you're like a totally different person. I don't understand that. I don't understand how people can go to church and feel like crazy and do whatever they wanna do. So I hated church because I didn't understand how people were a certain way one day and the next day they're not. And then like being a minister's pastor's kid, you see a lot of people come and go. You see a lot of people come in your life and then leave. And then there's a lot of people who will put you down and talk bad about you. And I've seen my parents go through so much with other people that I just really hated the whole concept. But I had to learn that a lot of people don't know God for themselves. They expect the preacher to know God for them. They expect the Bible to just give them answers whenever they need them, but they don't like actually pray actively every single day. They don't read the Bible every single day. You know what I mean? Like they don't make it a part of their life. They just make it, oh, this is who I am. But you don't do anything to let me know that that's actually who you are. So that's what frustrated me a lot. And so I decided that you know what, since I don't see it, since I don't see people my age that truly love God and actually have a relationship with him, let me go ahead and change that. I want to change that for me. And so that's always been me and Cameron's thing is to show people that, you know, we're not just out here like we go to church because that's what we're supposed to do. We don't just like talk about God because that's what everybody else does. It's not an everybody else thing. It's not like I'm just doing it because that's what I was raised to do. Like I'm doing this because it changed my life. I'm a Christian because Jesus changed my life. Like that's why I'm a Christian. Learning to, learning how to believe and learning how to have faith is something that I really had to learn. Like, and this all happened within like the past two years. Cause believe it or not, even though I grew up a Christian and even though I grew up in a very, very Christian household, my parents are both preacher's kids and you know we're just a lineage of preacher's kids even though that is us and that's our life um there always there was a point where we all at one point had to really decide you know who we're gonna be are we gonna follow the path or are we gonna go off astray and I've always this is why Alice in Wonderland is my favorite movie I've always felt like I don't know which way to go I have no way you know, and everything is crazy, everybody's crazy, what's the point, why am I here, how do I get back to where I was, um, or how do I get somewhere where I'm happy, and it's like, you know, the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland, I love this movie because, y'all, I can preach from this movie, okay, I can write an essay, y'all just don't even know. The Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland, he said, you have lost your way because you have no way. I think that's the quote, if I'm wrong let me know but that's basically been like my whole like journey is like I've lost my way I lost my way because I had no way I didn't know what the way was I didn't know what it meant to find my way you know what I mean my whole Christian journey has been a journey to find my way 
and figure out who I am and what I'm supposed to do. I'm still not 100% sure what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel like I'm almost there. I feel like being a wife was definitely in the plan for what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, ultimately, I don't know if this is exactly it. I know that all I can do is trust God and that is what has gotten me to this point doing YouTube and being a wife and all that stuff. All of this is happening to me because I gave it all to God. Like I just stopped. Tr Where's a friend? Um, I completely stopped trying to do stuff myself. I completely stopped trying to understand everything because everything is not meant to be understood because I did not make the universe so I can't fully understand how it works. All I know is that I can just give all of my cares and all of my issues and all of my questions to God and let him answer them. And people are always like, well, how do you hear God for yourself? How do you know what his voice sounds like? I actually don't know for sure. I know his voice sounds a lot like me talking to myself because sometimes I'll just lay in the bed and I'm like, okay, God, I'm just going to talk to you. And then I'm just like, so this happened, this happened, this happened. And then all of a sudden I like just start saying stuff. And it's not like I'm like, I can uncontrollably talk, but I'll be saying things that make sense to me, but it'll like be things that I normally wouldn't think of in that way. I don't know how to explain it, but me and God, we have a relationship, we have a relationship now where it's just like me talking to myself. So my husband will be home sometimes, like if he's working from home or something, and he'll be like, Vicky, who are you talking to? And I'll be like, uh, excuse you, can you not interrupt me and my Jesus conversation? Like, we talking right now, excuse you. And he thinks I'm crazy, but that's the way that I talk to him. That's the way me and Jesus talk. And back when I was at home, I used to just like get in my car and start driving. It's too bright. I didn't know where I was going. I would just go look at big houses or something. And I would just drive around in the dark, like get lost, and then find my way back. And me and God would have long conversations. Or sometimes I wouldn't even have a conversation. Sometimes I would just stop and breathe and think about things. Because I do so much now, I have so much work to do. Like I have to clean and cook and grocery shop and make videos and make videos and make videos and edit and make videos. I have to like, every now and then, and I'm not an overly spiritual person. My mom has always taught me to not be a deep spiritual person. She's like, it's good to be spiritual, but don't over spiritualize things. Like don't think you have to go in a corner and everybody's different. So maybe this works for you, but you know, some people like they have to like go sit in a corner and like rock back and forth with the Bible in the chest and just, oh, that's not me. Um, I do what my mom does. Um, she just walks around the house and while she's cleaning up and stuff, she just talks. And it sounds like she's just talking to herself, but she's actually praying. So that's what I do. It works for me. My Christian life or whatever, I don't feel like we're better than anybody else. I don't feel like we know more than anybody else. The only difference is that when they go to, when other people who, who don't have a relationship with God, when they go to bed at night, they feel empty. You know what I mean? And I felt that. I know what that feels like. Like I've been there where you just, you go to bed and you have no idea why you're alive. You have no idea what to do with yourself, you know? Even though you know what you're good at and you know your talents and you know the things that you like, none of that satisfies you completely. And it's because you're missing the voucher. And this is what I was talking about on Twitter. It's like at some point you need God to vouch for your soul because you don't understand what your spirit is like. You know what I mean? You understand which, how your brain works. You understand the things that you can physically see. But what about the things that you can't see? What about the things that are going on inside of you that you don't know about or you don't understand? Who vouches for that? Who can see that? And it's like, only God can see that. That's how I see it. That's how I think about it. And I didn't really think that that meant something to me or it was important until, like I said, when I finally got out of my phase where I was trying to be the world and to do certain things that were stupid. <laughs> um, I got to a point where that wasn't even that wasn't fulfilling anymore and I was just like I need a relationship with God and I know it's because nobody is vouching for my soul my parents can't do that my friends can't do that Cameron can't do that nobody can vouch for my soul but God and it's, it's more than just an understanding of where I go after I die it's like it's a spiritual thing, man. You just can't even like understand it. You, there's no way for you to wrap your mind around it, but it's there and you know it's there and you know it makes sense. You just don't want to make sense of it because it doesn't, you can't see it, you know, but sometimes things that you can't see are the most important things you'll ever experience. The future is the most important thing that you'll ever experience and can you see that? No. 
but guess who can? There are, and I'm gonna be transparent and honest with you guys, I don't really care, because it happened and it's in the past, but there's been times where I almost got raped. Um, there's been times where I almost lost my life. Um, there have been times where I was a totally different person and I was literally standing on the outside of myself one day looking in the mirror and I was like I have no idea who you are anymore so I, w I was lost I was lost but now I'm found <laughs> but yeah seriously there there are so many instances in life where I was sitting in the car like why am I here what am I doing this for you know this is a bad idea and I knew it was God talking to me because who says that to themselves right that's pretty much it why do I always do the same look every time you guys, I'm just going to put some lipstick on. Oh, my lipsticks are melting. Yeah. Do we like that? I think we do. It's not my fault, guys. I'm a creature of habit. Anyway, I hope that was helpful to you guys. If you have any questions, let me know. So I'll see you guys in my next video. People are like, why are you so obsessed with your bangs? And why do you always touch them? Y'all, my bangs are all I got. I ain't got nothing else. <laughs> nothing else to sustain me. All right, I'm crazy. I'm gone.